take a look down under with this week's fish eye view sponsored by mercury number one on the water because catch and release is standard practice these days, fish are surviving to become educated in the ways of anglers. One of the most common solutions to this problem is to use finesse techniques, fluorocarbon line, downsized baits, and slower presentations. Round out the package by using little added weights, or better still, absolutely no weight at all, and you can turn things around when dealing with a tough bite. At the highest level of finesse is the use of live bait obtained from the very same waters you're fishing in. Organic copy or the real thing most fish can't resist. With so many anglers fixated on this technique, we've noticed a strange reverse effect in behavior. There were times when finesse methods proved to be the wrong choice after all. Stranger still, we've even witnessed live bait being refused. When we employed a bolder approach, those same fish hit aggressively. What this amounts to is a classic case of over finessing the fish at a time when they demand a louder presentation. A good plan of attack is several rods at hand and ready to go. Start off with a big statement to pick off any active hitters, then follow up by toning it down. It's a one-two punch for putting more fish into the boat. Bottom line is, like all good techniques, finesse has a time and place. As one of our most popular game fish, smallmouth bass receive a lot of angling pressure with catch and release standard procedure. What this means is that a high percentage of individuals have been caught before and intelligent fish, they remember negative experiences for years and become conditioned against certain baits and techniques. This type of reaction is typical on cottage lakes where you erroneously hear it's fished out. Live bait is one solution, but you run the risk of injuring deeply hooked fish and they eventually see through this as well, becoming line shy. Invisible fluorocarbon leaders are always a good idea on pressured waters. Another band-aid solution is targeting post-spawn fish as soon as the season opens. Some male smallmouth will still be guarding free-swimming fry near shore. A better alternative is a back-to-basics approach using the new generation of soft plastics and organic baits. Rather than using overcomplicated items bent on realism, try something simple like a plain worm or basic minnow. Downsizing and presentation is the real key. Quiet landings and a slow descent will trigger tough smallmouth. Repeat presentations are also a good idea. These fish are used to run and gun one-cast anglers. If all else fails, try something offbeat with these baits. In this case, it took an organic minnow presented upside down. By definition, underwater structure is a change in surrounding topography, while cover refers to features that provide shade and security. Fishing or filming, if you can see them, it stands to reason they can see you. To overcome this problem, simply put some form of underwater cover between yourself and the fish. Strange as it may seem, it doesn't have to be much. A single rock, branch, or strand of weed is enough to allow you this close to most elusive fish out there. Even though you're still visible, there's a calming effect. It's like a security blanket to the fish. That's how we're able to get shots like these. Now, watch our drifting bait, refused until it reaches the comfort zone of that very same patch of debris. Here it is again. Next drift, same thing. It's just that dramatic. Without question, the very best overhead cover is man-made. While respecting private property, docks, anchored boats, and boathouses are classic places to find fish on any lake. Bear in mind, these are wild fish on a pressured cottage lake, and certainly not pet fish at the dock. Even so, this is exactly how we're able to film in this situation. Bottom line is, when you put the right type of cover between yourself and the fish, you can get away with anything.